Hello friends, welcome back. Today I am sharing five Cricut Design Space tips for beginners. So the first one I wanted to share with you is pretty simple. I wanted to share how to ungroup your text. This is really helpful when you are using cursive text. So if I type this word Bailey, you'll see that when I type it in Cricut, it spaces out the letters. I want all of my letters when I use a cursive font to be connected to each other so everything flows nicely. What most people do when they have a cursive font is just decrease the letter spacing in Cricut, but I don't like to do it that way because with some letters it will overlap them as you can see here with the B and the A. Some letters it will line up perfectly, but I would rather just ungroup everything and put the letters where I want them to go. In the upper right hand corner of Design Space, there is a button that says ungroup. So when you click on that, it will take each letter of your text box and separate it into its own thing. So you can move each letter individually around and place them where you want them to go. So this tool is not only helpful for cursive fonts, but it is helpful when you have fonts that you want to make each letter a different size. If you wanted to make the first letter of the name, kind of how I did here. I made the B in Bailey a little bit larger. And you can move all the letters around to just make any word or name very whimsical and wavy and just kind of make things a little bit more fun. Tip number two is how to unlock the proportions of a shape or a word. I will show you with both. So I am going to just type in unlocking, unlocking. There we go. Okay, I'm going to just move this out of the way and make it bigger. And I will show you with the square first. There are two places that you can unlock the proportions on a shape or a word. The first is the bottom left hand corner of the shape itself. And the second is up where you would change the size of an item. So when you do click one of those locks, you'll see that in the bottom right hand corner of the shape, it changes to a button that you can use to make this shape literally whatever you want. So you can make really thin stripes, you could make a long rectangle, you can do anything with any shape. I use this tool the most for making thin lines and borders when I am making tumblers. And like I said, the exact same process works for letters, words, and blocks of text. So you just click the lock and you can change the proportions of your words and letters. Tip number three is something I see asked a lot with new Cricut users and it is really important and makes a big difference. And that is grouping versus attaching versus welding. So I've got my name here in cursive, and what I'm gonna do is ungroup the text like we talked about, and now I've got individual letters. So I'm going to move these out of the way really quick. And I'm just gonna position the letters where I want them to go. And I'm gonna show you what would happen if I just put the letters where I wanted them to go, didn't attach or group or weld or anything. So if I go up to make it, you'll see that on my cutting mat, it rearranges the letters in a way that Cricut thinks will save the most material. So just because you have something lined up on the canvas doesn't mean it's gonna stay lined up when you go to cut it. That's why it's important to attach or weld your text. Now with a cursive font, I always weld the letters together and I'll show you why. So I'm going to make this white so you can see all the cut lines a little bit better. And as you can see, now that I made it white, you can see all of these little black cut lines in between the letters. That's because Cricut thinks they're still all individual letters and will be cut separately. Now before I weld these letters together, I'm going to show you what happens when you attach all of the letters. I'm going to highlight all of the letters and click attach in the bottom right hand corner. And then when I go to make it, you'll see that all of the letters are next to each other, but they still have those little cut lines in between the letters, so it's going to still cut each letter individually. 
Using the attach tool is great for keeping separate elements together when you go to cut. So if you've created a text design or a design with a bunch of different shapes that you want to cut all next to each other or in the same arrangement, you can use the attach tool. Okay, let's weld this word. So at the bottom right hand corner, right next to attach is the weld button. So when I click on that, you'll see that it has welded everything together. So this is all one piece and those cut lines are gone. One thing that is very important to remember when you are welding things together is that there is no unweld button. So once something is welded and you've done a bunch of other steps, you can't just go back and unweld whatever you've put together. So if you weld something on accident, undo it immediately and it'll go back to normal. But once you've welded something and you've done a bunch of other stuff, there's no way to undo that weld. So make sure that your design is complete and exactly how you want it before you weld anything together. So when I go to make it, it's going to cut out my name as one big piece. And when I weed it, it's not going to have those little cut lines in between each individual letter. So now I'm going to show you how to group letters together and what that means for your word. So I'm just going to arrange these letters kind of a little more bouncy, a little more whimsical. And when I'm done, I'm going to highlight everything and I'm going to click group up at the top right hand corner. And you can see that it's put all those letters together under the same group. So if I wanted to resize or move that whole word around on my canvas, I can do that. But when I go to make it, it's going to be the same as if those letters were individuals. It does not group them together on your canvas. So just because you group something together while you're working on your project does not mean that when you go to cut it, those letters will still be grouped together the way you had them. Grouping things together is really helpful for me when I am layering images. I can group all my layers together and resize and move the entire project at one time to make sure that I'm not resizing some parts of the image and not others. But most of the time, what I will do if I'm going to cut something is either attach or weld if I want everything to be cut as one piece. Tip number four is something else I see a ton of questions about, and that is doing a print and cut. So I'm going to grab a couple images from my uploaded images. I'm going to grab an SVG, which is this Merry Happy Christmas, and I'm going to grab a PNG, just regular image file, and add them both to my canvas. And as you can see, I added them both to my canvas, but the Merry Happy Christmas, because it's an SVG, is automatically set to cut because that's a cutting file, and the special delivery sticker is set to print and cut because when I uploaded it, I set it as a print and cut image. But what I think a lot of people don't know is that you can take an SVG file and make it a print and cut. So if I just go to the SVG, I'm going to weld everything together because I want it all to be one piece. And I'm going to go up to the top where it says line type and fill, and I'm going to change the fill to print. And now my SVG is a print and cut image. So I can change the color. I can make the letters into a pattern. So if you've got a fun pattern that you want your text to be like this unicorn pattern or this glitter, you can always change an SVG into a print and cut file and it will print it out and you can customize it however you want. However, the opposite is not always true. So this print and cut image I uploaded as a print and cut, so it saved only the cut line. The Cricut will not recognize each letter that I have in the image. So if I go back up and I change this to cut, as you can see, it's only going to show me the outline of the image because that's all it recognizes. So as a general rule of thumb, you can always change an SVG to a print and cut, but you cannot change a regular image into a plain cut file. One thing that is important to note about changing an SVG or a cut file into a print and cut is that it will cut out all of those individual letters and individual pieces. So it will be just like cutting it out of vinyl except it will be on printable vinyl or whatever you're using. So if you want it to cut out one piece like a sticker, you would need to go into Procreate or a different program to put a background outline on the image so that it can cut one big piece. 
I have one more print and cut tip and it will help you maximize the material that you are printing and cutting. As you may know, Cricut only allows you to cut a small portion of whatever your material is. It won't let you cut from a full like eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. It has specific cut dimensions that it uses for print and cut, which is kind of annoying, but this tip will help you maximize your space. So what you're going to do is create a shape, unlock the proportions, and set it to the dimensions that the Cricut will recognize for print and cut. And those dimensions are 6.75 inches wide by 9.25 inches high. So now that you've got this shape, you can see exactly what your print and cut space is, and you can arrange your elements onto this square to make sure that you are not wasting any material. Once you've got everything arranged on your little mini canvas the way you want it, you'll want to get rid of that box and then highlight all of your elements and hit flatten, which is in the bottom right hand corner next to attach. With print and cut images, you wanna remember that you don't want to hit attach or weld because that will turn them into cut files and you don't wanna do that. You wanna keep them as beautiful print and cut images. So once you've flattened everything, you can go to make it and the sheet is pretty much all filled up. So if you really maximized every little tiny part of that rectangle, you can fit a lot of stickers or elements on one sheet. I'm gonna show you what will happen if you don't use the rectangle as a guide. So if you've just got your elements on your canvas and you go to make it, it will do the same thing that it normally does when you're cutting. It will arrange the elements on the page to save the most amount of material but with a print and cut when you're using this material you're printing so you can't put a little scrap of paper back into the printer and use it again printable vinyl water slides all of that material is really expensive so i would recommend using the rectangle as a guide to make sure that you are not wasting any bit of it all right, guys, that is all the tips I have for today. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more Cricut Design Space tips, let me know and I'd be happy to share more of what I know. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We make new videos every Friday. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.